In this presentation, we will see one application of function pointers. So let's get started. Suppose we want to call a function named func at a certain point in time in our code. We want to call this function func at certain point in time. Okay. For example, we have this function func which is capable of performing addition, right? And within this main function, we are calling this function at this point in time, right? So it is hard coded. We can say this function has to be called at this point in time. When this printf function is called, then this function has to be called. It is not the case that here user will decide that this function has to be called or some other function has to be called. There is nothing that has to be decided at runtime, right? User will not decide that this function has to be called or we should call some other function at this point in time. At this point in time, this function call is fixed. This means that at compilation time, it is decided that this function has to be called. Now, there are some situations in which user has to decide which function has to be called at a particular point in time. There are definitely some situations in which the user has to decide which function has to be called, right? Let's say we want to design a calculator which has the capability to perform addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. We want to design a calculator program which has the capability to perform all these operations. And here the user will decide which operation he or she wants to perform. Obviously, it is the user decision whether he wants to perform addition, whether he wants to perform multiplication or some other operation. Suppose we have decided to create a separate functions for these operations. What we have decided is we will create separate functions for these operations. Like we will have a separate function for addition, separate function for subtraction, separate function for multiplication and separate function for division. We can design our program in some different way as well, but we have decided to create separate functions for these operations. Okay. Now we want user to decide which function has to be called at runtime. Okay. So we want the user to decide which function has to be called at runtime. If suppose user decides to add two numbers, then addition function has to be called, right? One way is to use if or switch case expressions. This is obviously the one way in which user will input some number or some character or something like that. And according to that choice, we will decide which function has to be called, right? So this is the user decision. So we can do this by using if or switch case expressions. Let's see the program in which we have used the switch case expressions to create a calculator program. Here is our program which is capable to calculate all these operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And within this main function, we can see we have a choice variable and we have three float variables a, b and result. We ask the user to enter the choice that is zero for sum, one for sub, two for mult and three for div. It means that if user enters zero, then he or she wants to add two numbers. If user enters one, it means that user wants to subtract two numbers. If user enters two, then it means that he or she wants to multiply two numbers. And if it is the case, he or she enters three, then it means that he or she wants to perform the division, right? So the choice is being asked from the user. And then after that, the two numbers will be asked. Then according to the choice, we'll perform the operations. If suppose user enters zero, then case zero will get activated. Hence the sum function will be called, which will return the addition of two numbers and it will get stored in this result variable. And then after that, we can print this result on the screen. At a time, user can enter one choice, right? Now let's execute this code. Enter your choice. Let's say I entered zero. Then it asks us to enter two numbers. Sum is 168, right? Let's enter any key to continue. So the program is working fine, right? Okay. There is another way in which we can also use function pointers, right? With the help of function pointers also, we can design our calculator program. Let's see how we can do that. Here we have designed a calculator program using function pointers. Here we have all these functions, sum, sub, mult, and dv. And uh, within this main function, I have declared an array of pointers. This is basically an array of pointers because as we already know that square brackets have more precedence in comparison to star. So PTR to func belongs to square brackets. Hence, this is basically an array of pointers. Now these pointers are nothing but the pointers to the functions which consist of two arguments, two float arguments and it will return a float value, right? And these are the addresses we are passing to this particular array, right? So this is an array of pointers, which are function pointers. And as they are function pointers, therefore they need the addresses of the functions. And as we know, the name of the function is actually indicating the address of the function, right? So passing sum means we are passing the address of this particular sum function. 
right? So this is the way we are passing these addresses to this array, right? After that, again, we ask the user to enter the choice and then he or she will enter the choice. After that, we will ask the user to enter the two numbers and we will simply call function according to the choice. So if suppose user enters the choice zero, then it will be PTR to func zero, which means that this function is called that is some function. And these are the two arguments which are passed to it, right? So that means the two numbers which are entered by the user and then the sum is returned and it will get printed on the screen, right? So if the user enter one, it means that he or she wants to perform subtraction and here choice will get replaced by one, which means that this function is now called and now the subtraction is performed. So in this way, we can use function pointers to call these functions at runtime. And actually it is helping us to decide at runtime which function has to be called, right? So according to the user choice, a particular function has been called using function pointers. This program is obviously easy to write, right? In comparison to this program, here we have to mention all these switch cases. But here, there is no need to mention switch cases at all. Also, this program is quite concise and easy to read. And without using switch cases, we can call these functions at runtime. Obviously, the choice is required from the user, but definitely there is no need of any switch expressions. In this program, if suppose we want to add one more function, then we have to add one more case here. Then again, we can see here there is redundancy. Result variable is used here many number of times. Although we can call printf function here itself, but again, it is redundant. So that redundancy is also eliminated in this program. Here, there is no redundancy at all, right? Hence, it is very easy to write program and it is one of the application of function pointers. Obviously, it is a very simple program. This program is just demonstrating the use of function pointers. We can use function pointers to call a particular function at runtime. When the decision has to be made at runtime, then we can use function pointers. It can easily eliminate the use of switch expressions. Right? Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation.